January is one of the best months of the year for movie fans. It's the unofficial start of award season, which begins in earnest only one week from today with the Golden Globes. One of the most talked about films this award season, one that's nominated for four Golden Globes, in fact, is Selma. It's the first major feature film about Martin Luther King, but Selma is generating some controversy as well, not for its depiction of the civil rights leader, but for its treatment of President Lyndon B. Johnson and the implication that he was not necessarily supportive of and maybe even hostile to the civil rights leader's protest campaign in Selma. We want federal legislation granting Negroes the right to vote unencumbered. Well, um, <clears throat> that's fine, but most of the South is still not desegregating. Let's not start another battle when we haven't even won the first. This voting thing is just going to have to wait. Film also suggests LBJ was complicit in the FBI's secret effort to discredit Martin Luther King. Johnson defenders have been quick to suggest that President Johnson and Dr. King were partners during the civil rights movement. The director of LBJ's Presidential Library and Museum says Selma's characterization of Johnson, quote, flies in the face of history. In truth, the partnership between LBJ and MLK on civil rights is one of the most productive and consequential in American history. One of Johnson's former top aides called the Voting Rights Act one of his greatest legislative achievements, viewed King as an essential partner in getting it enacted. He also suggested that the marches in Selma were actually Johnson's idea. Film's director defended her work, tweeting that, quote, the notion that Selma was LBJ's idea is jaw-dropping and offensive to the black citizens who made it so. She also tweeted, quote, bottom line is folks should interrogate history. Don't take my word for it or LBJ's rep's word for it. Let it come alive for yourself. Joined now by Andrew Young, who was an aide to Martin Luther King Jr. He was also the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. during the Carter administration, as well as a congressman, former mayor of Atlanta. Uh, really appreciate you being here today, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your time. So I, I want to start with uh, the, 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 some of the uh, most controversial elements of this movie and just try to establish the, the basic historical facts here. So we played a clip there, and this is one that's gotten a lot of attention, a December 1964 meeting between Martin Luther King and President Johnson, Martin Luther King making the case for a Voting Rights Act, and President Johnson telling him this thing's just going to have to wait. I believe you were at that meeting. Is that how it played out? It played out almost that way, but President Johnson did not say that it had to wait. He said that I have a great agenda and I can't just, I just got through. Remember, this was December, the Civil Rights Act of 64 had just passed in July. So we're coming six months afterwards and we did not expect him to commit but we did expect him, we were really kind of letting him know that we had to pursue voting rights. His uh, agenda, I found later, was that he thought that the great society, uh, Medicare, Title I, uh, aid to the disadvantaged, should come, would be easier for him to bring first. If he had said that, we would have probably agreed with him, but we didn't have a choice because three days after we got back to Atlanta, and this was right after Dr. King won the Nobel Prize, Mrs. Amelia Boynton came over from Selma, and Jim Clark had um, uh, enjoined the movement against holding an NAACP Emancipation Proclamation service in a church. Jim Clark had said, no political meetings can occur in churches. Mrs. Boynton's husband had to be buried from the street because Jim Clark would not let her husband's funeral cortege go into the church. So we were responding to an emergency. Mm -hmm. We were responding to a crisis. Mm -hmm. And we agreed that we would go to, to Selma the 2nd of January. But at the time when we met with President Johnson in the middle of December, Neither Dr. King nor President Johnson had thought of Selma. The, the, other, uh, the, the other element here that uh, a lot of people around uh, who were around the former president um, are objecting to is, is a scene that strongly suggests that LBJ was complicit in what J. Edgar Hoover's FBI was doing in terms of surveillance of Martin Luther King and in, in sending a tape 
to Coretta Scott King uh, of MLK uh, having some kind of extramarital relation. The scene plays out where the president gets frustrated with Dr. King. Uh, he, he's aware of this uh, surveillance, and then he places a call to J. Edgar Hoover, and then you're shown Coretta Scott King uh, dealing with these, these revelations. Is that fair to LBJ? That I don't think is fair to LBJ because it was actually Robert Kennedy uh, who signed the order of allowing the, the FBI to uh, wiretap all of us. I had a wire running into my house that I just discovered about two years ago. Uh, and it's probably been there since I moved into that house in 1966. Uh, we knew we were bugged, but that was before LBJ. And the present FBI director keeps that letter on his desk. And uh, he makes people read it and says that that was the, one of the lowest positions in the history of the movement of the FBI. Now, even as I say that, one of the things that I like about Selma and one of the things that the movie shows if we would look at it is that this was the one time that everybody got everything right. SNCC and SCLC disagreed, but with John Lewis' help, we got it right. We got it together. Johnson actually did a mar marvelous job, and Nick Cott's book on LBJ and Martin Luther King uh, described the detailed ways in which Lyndon Johnson used his mastery of the political process to deliver this bill. We could not have had this bill without Lyndon Baines Johnson, but Lyndon Baines Johnson could not have passed it without Martin Luther King, without the death of Jimmy Lee Jackson, Viola Liuzzo, uh, James Reeb, uh, Schwerner, Cheney, and Goodman uh, in Mississippi, Medgar Evers. Uh, it's unfair for anybody to talk about credit. Too many people gave their lives. Think, yeah. Too many people risked too much. I, I think that's a great point. And in terms of the portrayal of the people on the ground who are waging this fight, there have been no objections that have been registered by anybody to this film. It's, it's strictly about that relationship between MLK and but LBJ, let, let's obviously. Even, let's, even say, let's even say, though, that on this occasion, 30 days, uh, 90 days after President Johnson said, he didn't have the power to pass civil rights legislation in 1965. He was standing up on the 28th of March with a joint session of Congress, and he introduced legislation which changed the South. That's what we want to celebrate in the Selma film. Yeah, no, and that, that, was, uh, that was the, the LBJ speech where he said, we shall overcome. Uh, he said, I, we shall overcome. In a, in an amazing moment in, in presidential history. We, we are short on time. I, I, I don't mean to cut you short, but I do want to also, we had the news overnight of the passing of Ed Brooke. Ed Brooke, the, the first popularly elected African-American U.S. senator in history, served two terms from Massachusetts, dying at the age of, uh, of, 90, of uh, 95 years old. I just wonder your thoughts on Ed Brooke, his life and his legacy. My, my thoughts on Ed Brooke was that uh, he was one of those people in the Senate that worked with Lyndon Johnson. When I got to the Congress, uh, we worked together on a number of urban uh, finance bills, uh, the passage of our mass transit legislation, uh, the helping to build our airport, uh, all of these things. And he was quiet, he was strong, uh, but we lost another visionary also this last week, and that's Mario Cuomo. Uh, those were two of the great men of American politics. They saw clearly they were not petty, uh, and uh, they held, even though one was Republican and one was Democrat, uh, they held the national interest uh, as their priority in anything and everything they did. All right. Andrew Young, former U.N. ambassador, former Atlanta mayor and civil rights icon. I appreciate your time very much this morning. Thank you.